the worst of their members and defending them rather than advocating for our kids. And when you have the President of the United States sleeping with a member of the teachers' union, there is no chance that you could take the stranglehold away from the teachers' union every day. You mentioned the President's situation. I'm, my wife uh, isn't a member of the teachers' union, but I got to admit, I've, I've been sleeping with a teacher for 38 years. And um, so full disclosure. No, just no. Let's bring back the panel. Alice, Doug, Margaret, Shelby are here. Margaret, um, I think we've titled this Black Most Cringeworthy Moments from the debate. I, I can't. What, 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 why are they talking about education this way? But, uh, to be honest, other than that cringeworthy moment, to me, the cringiest part was just that everybody was yelling at each other. And it's like, hey, this whole group of seven people is all trying to break through and displace Trump. And nobody's doing it because they're all yelling at each other. I, I found it really hard to watch the, for the duration because of that dynamic. Yeah, Shelby Talcott, weigh in on that. Did you have the same impression? There is no chance. It was distracting. The entire debate was just largely people talking over each other. And the moderators at one point said, hey, listen, when you guys talk over each other, nobody can hear anything. And that was completely accurate. And so you ended up losing a lot of whatever they were trying to say because there were three or four people talking at the same time. And it was kind of a mess. It was it was kind of sloppy. And I think that they lost a lot out of it because of that. One person I kept hearing try to get in through the chaos was Tim Scott. It seemed like he was trying really hard to make a, a bigger impression. And one of the criticisms of him after the last debate was that he, frankly, missed an opportunity. He may not have made mistakes, but it wasn't he missed an opportunity. Did he did he take his opportunity this time? Well, I think nobody worked harder to insert themselves and, and unfortunately unsuccessfully uh, than Governor Doug Burgum. And, you know, Doug's got to work really hard to, to be successful at some of these things and, and really speak out all Doug's. Uh, but clearly, Tim Scott showed a lot more fire um, than, than we saw in the last debate and, and throughout the campaign. His campaign was saying this was going to be a big night for him, and it was. But again, we have to remember, what are these candidates running for? My prediction for Vivek after this is we're going to see him doing commercials on buying gold or sleeping pills or things like that, not as a serious contender for a cabinet position or, or president. This, this nomination is not about who comes and rockets into third place after this debate. It's about who can take on Donald Trump, if anyone, and we're still looking for that person. I have to say there were a lot of my pillow ads throughout this Fox Business uh, debate, so point interestingly taken. Um, Alice Stewart, uh, I think this is probably going to be our final word. It, on the, the Tim Scott, Nikki Haley question, I, this is a little bit behind the scenes, but when I talk to my sources, there is a lot of bad blood between those two camps uh, right now. And I think you saw a little bit of that on the stage, too. Well, we saw a lot of bit of that on the stage. And look, Southern hospitality was out the window with the two <laughs> candidates from South Carolina. It was astounding to see. But clearly, uh, Tim Scott went after her for gas taxes in South Carolina when she was governor. And she went after him for what she says he hasn't been able to do in Washington. It was it was shocking. But uh, again, a lot of bad blood and they put it out there for all the world to see but she really held her own again as she did the first debate with vivek Ramaswamy. and let me just say in closing the uh, i think one of the best uh, tweet responses to this uh, was from mark caputo from the messenger and he said find someone who loves you as much as nikki haley hates vivek Ramaswamy." i think that pretty much sums up her performance on the debate <laughs> and by, stage. by the way casey the dynamic that we saw last night with Nikki Haley and Tim Scott is very reminiscent of Jeb Bush versus Marco Rubio. Mm -hmm. It's personal. It's state politics. It's about a.